Hello everybody and welcome to Serious Sunday. My name is Luke, I'm your host, and this is the show where I talk about video games and things. And last week I did a video talking about Mass Effect Andromeda and how a lot of people were prejudging the game regardless of the fact that it didn't actually release until last Tuesday. I urged people to get the opportunity to play the game for themselves before they made any rash decisions on whether it was going to be an actually good game or not, and I absolutely stand by that decision. I myself also decided to put my money where my mouth is, and picked up Mass Effect Andromeda myself just this last Friday, and have been playing a little bit over the last day or two. To that end, now that I've had the opportunity to touch the game a little bit and get some hand-on experience with it, thought I'd share my thoughts about the game with you, and to confirm and or deny some of the claims about the game's quality levels that were spouted prior to its release. As with any review, this is all personal preference, and I have personally only so far put nine hours into the game, so absolutely feel free to make of that what you will. I fully recognize that I haven't even fully built out my team, there is still an empty slot, so I have yet to experience what the entire roster of characters in the game is going to be like, and aside from Habitat 7 and the first major planet Eos, I haven't had a lot of experience with the game's exploration or larger overarching plot. That said, I had some preliminary thoughts that I thought I would share with you guys. The short version of my thoughts about Andromeda is that it's like Mass Effect 1 again, with all of the rough edges that that implies. It's an enjoyable game experience in the limited amount of time that I've spent on the game, but how much you enjoy it I think is going to be contingent on whether you enjoy the open world of Mass Effect 1 or the tight stories of Mass Effect 2 and 3. Because first and foremost, this feels very much like going back to the first Mass Effect. Instead of small, tight pockets of gameplay like you got in Mass Effect 2 and onward into 3, it's a return more to the planet exploration of Mass Effect 1 and the much more freeform sort of open world concept that it had. Though admittedly, it's significantly more fleshed out than Mass Effect 1 was. You spend an awful lot of time in your Mako analog, which is the Nomad, climbing mountainsides and looking for points of interest. And the more handmade content is significantly more compelling, which I'm willing to admit, but there are other things to consider. There's a lot of exposition in this game, which I think contributes greatly to the rough start that it has. There's lots of introduction of new characters, unlike Mass Effect 2 where you already know Shepard, Garrus, the Reapers, Cerberus, and so on, Andromeda starts from a clean slate and it's hard to hit the ground running unlike a direct sequel can. The beginning's a little bit slow, but honestly that's not that much of a surprise if you think about it. Bioware openings are laborious, lest we forget the Citadel in Mass Effect 1, Telos in Knights of the Old Republic or even the Origins in Dragon Age Origins. Great though they may individually be, you do spend an awful lot of time playing through what ultimately works out to be introductory content before you get into the more freeform open world that the Mass Effect games are so well known for. The writing of the game feels very different from the rest of the Mass Effect series so far. That's not only because of the change in the protagonist and really the entire attack of the story because it's no longer a story about you against an unstoppable force and the Reapers coming to destroy the Milky Way galaxy and instead tells the story of a group of pioneers looking to make a place for themselves in a brand new galaxy, but also because the game is written by an entirely different team. Drew Karpachin, the writer of Mass Effect 1 and co-writer with Mac Walters for 2, and Walters taking the reins for 3, are not involved in Andromeda's writing team at all which this time was written by a guy named Chris Schlurf, formerly a writer for Halo 4, for 343, who after Andromeda wrapped, or quite possibly while it was still under development, moved on from Bioware Montreal to join Bungie as the new lead writer for Destiny. So we're working from a brand new person's brand new take on the Mass Effect series. This is evident in some of the dialogue writing that was given to even some known characters like the recorded dialogue snippets from Liara to Sony, for example. I haven't had time to comb through the credits of the game to look for who was directing the voice acting in the game, but I would imagine that it's a different person, considering that this Montreal team is not the Edmonton-based Bioware that you know from the first three Mass Effect games. The first three did do a very good job of getting strong delivery out of its actors, 
and telling a compelling story which set the bar extremely high for Mass Effect Andromeda. And in some places, it did sort of fall flat on that end. Some of the acting is admittedly stiff, which can be chalked up to odd writing choices in some cases, or just mediocre performances in others. I felt, for example, that Kamel Nanjiani's performance as the Salarian Jaran Tan was clunky at the beginning at the very least, though once you get into regular conversation with him, I felt it wasn't nearly as bad. Oddly enough, it felt like a lot of the introductory parts, meeting the new characters on the Nexus, were some of the roughest parts of the game, as far as writing and delivery were concerned. Which is kind of unfortunate, considering that that's some of the earliest content that you get any exposure to in the game. This, I think, is coloring a lot of people's experiences in general. The animation is a little bit wonky in some places, as people have been saying, but after playing it for nine hours, I find that I have, as I expected, stopped really noticing it that much. If I'm actively trying to think about the animations in the game, I can see plenty of problems with it, but I'm generally speaking more interested in general graphical fidelity than I am in perfect animations. The facial animations are also kind of weird in places, as people have been pointing it out. It could be a question of the facial rig being just a little bit odd in some of the characters, or it's entirely possible that Mass Effect Andromeda didn't do very much facial mocap and mostly handled it through procedurally generated character face movements when other characters were talking. Considering the sheer volume of characters that you meet in the game who speak, that seems likely. There seemed to be a little bit less incidental animations from characters when they're idling. I was told by one of my friends that there are characters in the game who apparently just stand around stiff as a board, not almost animating at all which I haven't personally experienced yet, but colored by pre-knowledge of animation strangeness as my experience is, I have noticed such things. So if animation is going to be a big pain point for you, then yes, it's entirely possible that Andromeda is going to give you trouble. That said, the game looks pretty. Don't let the background video in today's video fool you. I had to turn the game's video settings all the way down to low so that I could get even a remotely decent frame rate while recording in OBS. My R9 280X runs the game fairly smoothly at medium settings, which I find look quite nice to me in general. A more recent video card will perform even better, obviously. I've heard from friends who are running on NVIDIA cards that it has some performance issues, but in my personal experience with a Radeon card, it seems to be running quite smoothly. Surprisingly so, actually, though my computer was also able to run Witcher 3 quite reasonably as well, so there you go. Ultimately, I think in the case of Mass Effect Andromeda, if you're a huge diehard fan of the Mass Effect series, there's two ways that this is going to go. If what you were looking for was more of the stories of the humans versus the reapers, that sort of an epic man versus the unbeatable forces of the rest of the universe, then this perhaps is not something that you're going to get as much enjoyment out of because it's very human-centric, at least at the very beginning of the game. And of course, the characters that you know and love are back in the Milky Way galaxy 600 years in the past fighting the good fight in Mass Effect 3. It's a wonder, actually, that the Reapers didn't destroy the colony ships on their way out into space, but we won't touch on that one. If you're willing to go back to Mass Effect 1 and its more open-world exploration focus and some of the inventory management that Mass Effect 1 did, then I would be willing to hazard a guess that you're going to enjoy the game. If you were looking for more Mass Effect 2 or Mass Effect 3, then this one might not appeal to you very much. For a new take on Mass Effect from a new studio, I think the game does reasonably well. It does have a lot to contend with because the bar for quality in Mass Effect games is very high, but I enjoy joyriding in my Nomad and exploring Eos. The characters are interesting enough and the story is just starting to really pique my interest. It's a very different game, don't get me wrong, but I think that it has merits that are absolutely worth exploring. I haven't tried the multiplayer in the game at all yet, so I can't really comment on that. But at the end of the day, nine hours into the game, I'm still enjoying myself. I miss my Commander Shepard a little bit. Scott and Sarah Ryder are quite different people, but I'm going to learn to love them, I'm pretty sure. As with any long-running RPG game, I think you gotta put some time into it to really learn whether you love it or not. That said, the early game is not bad. The first planet does a good job of tutorializing, and I really like the option to now jump with your jump jets, and dash. 
the combat feels a little bit more snappy than it did and I'm very fond of the fact that you can now completely customize your character as opposed to being shoehorned in with the various classes that Commander Shepard had to deal with. It's far from a perfect game and it's definitely not going to be for everybody. I think that a lot of the graphics and terrible acting claims that were being made are quite overblown. It doesn't quite make it up to the bar that Mass Effect 2 and 3 set, but it's not Mass Effect 2 or 3. I enjoyed the hell out of Mass Effect 1, but there are a lot of people who didn't. I feel like if Mass Effect 1 was your favorite game in the series, then you're going to get a lot of fun out of Andromeda. It seems to be the direction that Mass Effect is going from this point. I'm going to continue to play the game over the week, and if I have any major changes of heart, Maybe I'll do a second follow-up video next Sunday, but that's about all of the thoughts that I have about Mass Effect Andromeda for this week. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it interesting. If you have any personal thoughts on Mass Effect Andromeda, if you've played the game and have managed to formulate some thoughts for yourself, if you agree with me or disagree with me, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to see it. Otherwise, I just hope that I see you around again soon, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday or whenever it is that you happen to end up watching this video. But that's it for now, so have a good one, and take care.